Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Romanian National Mathematical Olympiad for 9th graders, 2016, problem number 4. We wish to find all functions f from the set of real numbers into itself, satisfying the following functional inequality. f of x squared minus f of y squared is less than or equal f of x plus y times x minus f of y for all the real numbers x and y. Here are my hints for this problem. First, set x and y to be 0 and justify that f of 0 is 0. Then, set x to be 0 and separately set y to be 0 to show that f of x squared equals x times f of x. And in particular, transform our original inequality into this form, f of x times f of y is less than or equal xy. And show that uh, f of x is non-zero for non-zero arguments. Then set x to be f of y and then separately set y to be minus f of x to show that f of f squared of x equals f of x squared. And from there deduce that our function is involution. So f of f of x equals x. And then we'll allow you to show that f of x times f of y equals x, y, and that should uh, lead you to a solution rather easily from there. So give this problem a try, and I will see you in just a minute. All right, so let's call our functional inequality asterisk. And first, let's set x and y to be 0. Then, what happens? Notice that on the left-hand side we have 0, while on the right-hand side we have f of 0 plus 0, so f of 0, times 0 minus f of 0. All right, so after division by minus 1 we have that f squared of 0 is less than or equal 0. Well, since we are dealing with real numbers, that only means that f of 0 equals 0. All right, let's remember that. We'll use it. Now, let's set y be equal to 0 in our condition asterisk. And notice that then, then if we set y to be 0, using the fact that f of 0 is 0, we have f of x squared is less than or equal x times f of x. All right. Now, let's set x to be 0 in our condition asterisk. Then, then, minus f of y squared is less than or equal, now uh, x is 0. So we have y times minus f of y. which after division means that f of y squared is greater than or equal y times f of y. And now if you look, look closely, combining this and that, this means only one thing, that in fact equality must be true. So for every real number x, f of x squared equals x times f of x. And let's call this condition triangle. We'll use it later. All right, now this equation allows us to rewrite our original function equation. Our condition asterisk becomes now the following, becomes now the following. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have f of x squared, and f of x squared can be replaced by x times f of x minus y times f of y is less than or equal f of x plus y x minus f of y. All right, and let's multiply everything. On the right-hand side, we have f of x times x minus f of x, f of y plus xy minus y, f of y. And now some simplifications can be done. This cancels with that. This cancels with that. We can put x, y on the left-hand side, and we have derived this formula 
that for every real numbers x and y, f of x times f of y is less than or equal x times y. And let's call this condition square. We'll use it later. Now, let's go back once again to our functional equation, our original functional equation. And now I will make such, such a substitution to make the right hand side zero. So first of all, let's set y to be minus f of x. So set y to be equal minus f of x in our condition asterisk, our original functional equation asterisk. Then we have the following f of x squared minus f of y squared, but f of y squared is f of f squared of x is less than or equal to zero. All right. And now let's set. So basically, I have made this parenthesis to be zero. Now I will make this parenthesis to be zero. So let's set x to be f of y. in our functional equation asterisk. Then what do we have? f of f squared of y minus f of y squared is again less than or equal zero. Maybe let's expand it, i.e. f of x squared is less than or equal f of f squared of x. And in this case, i.e f of f squared of y is less than or equal f of y squared. Combining these two inequalities, we now have the following, that for every real number x, f of x squared equals f of f squared of x. And let's call this condition um, circle. Circle. Why not? All right. Now, let's notice the following. First of all, from condition which I marked uh, square, it can be observed that that f of x is not zero or x which is not zero. Well, why is that? Well, let's take a look. For example, if f of y would be zero, then x, y should be always non-negative. y is fixed constant, but x is arbitrary. y is not zero, so here I can produce any number whatsoever, negative included. So, and it's not true that no negative number is greater than or equal zero. So the only conclusion is that the only zero of our function must be zero. All right. But what's more, let's take, let's now take this condition combined with our condition triangle. So from, from conditions triangle and circle, we can derive the following. Let's take a look. f of f squared of x, using condition triangle, we're using condition triangle, it's the same as f of x, f of f of x. Yes, I'm using condition triangle right here. But by condition circle, what is f of f squared of x? Well, it's f of x squared f of x squared, but using triangle once again, once again, what is f of x squared? f of x squared is x times f of x. All right, and now we have two cases. If x is zero, then this, I claim basically the following, that for every real number x, f of f of x is x. 
How can we know it? Well, basically, if x is 0, then we have f of 0, which is 0. f of f of 0 is 0, so no problem there. And when f of x is not 0, then we take that this equals that. We can uh, divide by f of x, which is non-zero by our observation, and we get that f of f of x equals x. So maybe let's write this explanation. Indeed, indeed, f of f of zero equals f of zero equals zero. If x is non-zero, then f of x is non-zero by our observation. So x times f of x equals f of x f of f of x. We can divide by f of x. And we get x equals f of f of x. So our function is an involution. An involution. All right. And let's call this condition, I don't know, pentagon. Why not pentagon? Now, let's take, once again, our condition, which I marked uh, square. Remember that from condition square, from condition square, we have established that f of x times f of y is less than or equal xy, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, exactly. Now, let's take this and let's change, let's change x to f of x and let's change y to f of y because then what happens then then we have f of f of x but f of f of x is x y uh, f of f of x is x f of f of y is y how do i know it by condition pentagon then by condition pentagon we have this is less than or equal f of x times f of y. All right, but combining these two inequalities, we can deduce that indeed for any real numbers x and y, f of x times f of y equals, well, what? xy equals xy. All right, and in particular, let's set y to be 1 then then we have the following f of x equals x over f of 1 x over f x over f of 1 all right and in particular if i set x to be 1 if i set x to be 1 then we have the following that f squared of 1 is 1. So f of 1 is either plus 1 or minus 1. Which means that our function is either the minus identity of the real numbers or the identity of the real numbers. And this should be our solutions. We will do verification in the in a while, in a moment. But I claim that these are our solutions. All right, and let's do verification to make sure. It's very important to do verification. Let's do verification. Well, we wish to verify this inequality. Uh, this should be less than or equal f of x plus y, x minus f of y. All right. And you know what? Mm, let's cover both cases at the same time. Should we? Yes, we should. So we have plus or minus f, f uh, x squared 
minus plus y squared is less than or equal plus or minus x plus y, x minus plus y. It is understood that we have plus minus plus minus or minus plus minus plus at the same time. And we have plus minus x squared minus plus y squared is less than or equal plus or minus x times x plus minus x squared that is plus minus x times minus plus y is minus xy plus xy minus plus y squared and now everything cancels and we are left with zero is less than or equal zero which is of course true so all in all this closes our problem all in all we have two distinct solutions either the minus identity of the real numbers or the identity of real numbers and that is it so thank you very much for watching i hope that you've learned something new this time and i will see you next time goodbye